Today, I'm going to talk about one of the biggest mistakes marketers are making right now, and it's to do with how you design and measure your marketing funnel. It's a mistake I see all the time, and it causes a lot of confusion within marketing teams. And when you understand this mistake and why marketers are making it, I think a lot of things are going to start clicking into place. And hopefully, you'll become more confident using marketing metrics in a strategic way. Welcome to another episode of Data Smarties, the show where we get smart with data and Smarties. Okay, so here's the mistake. When people design their marketing funnel, they start with what you might call the classic funnel. Awareness, consideration, decision. Sometimes you also see interest and desire included as stages. Then they ask themselves, how will I measure the stages of this funnel? So then they look at the marketing tools, which are really good at measuring digital activity and user behavior, and they assign a metric they think best fits each stage of the funnel. So maybe for awareness, they might track social media impressions. For consideration, they might track website visits. And for decision, they might track purchases. But if you do this, you're making a fundamental mistake, which is going to cause problems further down the line. Why? Because this model and these metrics come from completely different marketing approaches. These digital metrics are not accurately measuring this model, and the use of this model with its set stages means we miss out on some really important metrics because they just don't fit. You see this type of mashed up marketing model absolutely everywhere. It's a bit of a Frankenstein's monster. And to understand why it exists in the first place, we need to go back in time. The classic marketing funnel is exactly that, classic. That's because it's been used for well over 100 years. The concept was first proposed at the turn of the 20th century by a person called E. St. Elmo Lewis, who suggested that the job of advertising is to attract the attention, awaken the interest, and create the conviction. And over the subsequent century, the classic marketing funnel became more used by brands and advertisers who wanted to be more strategic in their approach. By understanding how their brand is received in the market, they could determine exactly where to place their efforts in order to generate the biggest return. They understood that if you wanted a share of customers within a given market, then before those customers purchased you, they would first need to be aware your brand exists, and then consider your brand to be relevant to their needs. Crucially, this funnel has three important features. Number one, it's sequential. That means you can't be part of one stage without first being part of the previous stage. Two, it's customer oriented. It views your brand from the customer's perspective, not your own. In other words, you don't get to decide whether customers have heard of you, they do. Number three, it aims to represent an entire market or market segment. So if you're a US car brand, your starting point is all drivers in the US from which you can then understand how many are aware of your brand, how many have considered buying from you, and how many people have already bought. But what's really important is the way they measured this funnel. Not with user behavior metrics, but with market research. They used something called a brand tracking survey, which was conducted with a representative sample of the wider market. This meant that annually, or even quarterly, you would receive the latest results from your brand tracking survey. These would provide a host of metrics like brand awareness, unaided awareness, brand preference, price sensitivity, all of which helped you to measure your marketing funnel. And by understanding where your biggest gaps were, you could plan your marketing tactics accordingly. It's important to say that this approach hasn't actually changed all that much. Big consumer brands still use brand tracking research to understand awareness, consideration, and decision-making within the market at large. The real change is with smaller businesses and medium-sized businesses who, through digital tools, now have access to a whole host of user behavior metrics and digital activity metrics. And when people started designing digital marketing funnels, instinctively, almost without even giving it a second thought, they started mapping digital marketing metrics onto the classic marketing funnel. But when you think about what digital tools measure and what the classic marketing funnel has traditionally been used for, it becomes obvious that these things don't neatly fit together. Remember the three features of the classic marketing funnel. One, a good funnel should be sequential. However, many digital metrics which are used to track awareness and consideration are often not essential parts of the customer journey. Customers can leapfrog them. 
Two, customer oriented. The classic funnel is designed to look at your brand from the customer's point of view. But many digital marketing metrics look at customer behavior from your point of view. Put it this way, there's a big difference between a thousand customers saying that they're aware of your brand and Facebook saying it surfaced your ad to a thousand customers. Those two things are not the same. Three, your digital metrics don't describe your relative position within the entire market or market segment. So that means that 10,000 website users might well be half of your market segment, or it might be a tiny fraction. I'm not saying that the metrics you have available aren't valuable. Clearly, they can be very valuable when used in the right way. But what I am questioning is why we should be made to fit our metrics into a model that's designed for bigger brands using a different methodology with the budget to run regular brand tracking research. To me, that just doesn't make any sense. Instead, if you're a small business, the best thing you can do is just ignore that classic marketing funnel altogether and build a customer journey which you can measure which actually makes sense for your business. So, here are my four pieces of advice for building a useful, strategic marketing funnel. One, start at the end of your funnel with happy paying customers and then work backwards. Eventually, you'll hit a point where your funnel is no longer sequential and at this point, stop. Now, you should still track the performance of things like advertising campaigns, which happen beyond this point. Just don't include them in your strategic marketing funnel. It's better to separate these metrics out and appreciate where there is ambiguity. Two, map and measure as many stages of the funnel as makes sense to your customer's actual buying journey. You might have a buying journey which has as many as 15 clear, distinct stages, or you might have a buying journey which has two or three. It depends on your product and your business. Three, don't name your stages with generic words like interest or desire. Instead, tie them to your customer's actual buying experience. Visited payment page, signed up for free trial, created first report. This stops us projecting our assumptions about our customer's thoughts and feelings onto these metrics, because those assumptions may be incorrect. Four, be customer oriented. The classic marketing funnel was all about understanding how your customers perceived you, not the other way around. And for marketers, that's a really important discipline to maintain. Build your funnel around the moments where customers gain the most value and make genuine progress. These are going to be the most important stages you can measure. And if you have designed a customer journey which you can measure, what better way to keep track of it than Gecko Board? Gecko Board makes it easy to build live KPI dashboards. It connects to over 80 data sources and it's the easiest way to build marketing dashboards that let your team see the full picture. So once you've designed a marketing funnel that makes sense to you, you can keep track of that in real time with Gecko Board. It keeps your metrics visible and makes sure everybody stays on the same page. So if you're interested in Gecko Board, just head over to geckoboard.com to start your free trial today. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please do give us a like and subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions at all, just leave those in comments and we'll get back to you. And otherwise, I hope you have a great day.